Our next guest uh, on today is environmental activist and author of How to Grow Fresh Air. Uh, please welcome Kamal Meetle. Thank you so much for being here with us. Now, you've been a career activist. You, you know, spent your life trying to save trees, uh, reduce plastic packaging. Tell us a bit about your work and also how can we expand it? How can it go bigger uh, and more global? Well, it started in 1986 when I set up an organization called Save the Tree Organization to stop felling of trees in Himachal, especially, and Kashmir, to, which were used for packaging of apples. So we worked with children, and we had a program, Talk to Trees, so they understood what trees meant to them. And then we worked with the Australian Paper Mills Association and the New Zealand Box Makers Association, and finally found a solution which was an alternative to wooden packaging. Now, the wooden packaging used about one CFT of timber or wood per package. And they were felling about two acres of sparsely populated trees in the coniferous region, upper region of Himalayas, to pack one acre of apple orchards. So I guess we saved about... We have saved about 200 million even, trees till now. Nobody gave them any options, clearly. Yes, At we that gave time, them nobody even thought about... That's right, a technical option. A corrugated box made out of recycled paper or, or agricultural residue, which could take a half a ton compression load and could be also used in moist weather. And we worked with coal storages, uh, the transport companies, and also the sales in Bombay and South India, so that... People got used to it and they started using it. The, what the lesson has been that wherever you see any timber packaging used for fruits, one should replace them with, with uh, alternative packaging, which is recyclable. So that's the lesson which we learned. Uh, can you also talk about your efforts to reduce uh, the oil usage in, in scooters and uh, how can we bring down our emission levels? Well, that was another one in the 80s. I set up an organization called STOP, Stop Two Wheelers on Polluting India, because most of the engines which we had in scooters were two-stroke two engines, and what they were doing was they were using close to 5 to 10 percent engine oil mixed with the petrol uh, in that fuel tank, and as a result of which, we were emitting a lot of lubricating oil in the air each month, and that was the wrong oil. Although I was in business, one of my companies had been set up to produce recyclable oil pouches, which we continue to do. But uh, in terms of going and sending notices to the oil companies and going to court, I finally find a, uh, filed a PIL, public interest litigation, hmm. and got a court order, which, was, which resulted in uh, order for self-mixing pumps. So today, all the petrol pumps have a self-mixing pump, which, is, which has a 2% two two-stroke engine oil mixed with petrol, and that is dispensed, so there's no packaging at all. So the joke was that I've chopped my own hands and feet by taking this action, but I think the environment was bigger than profit in terms of our own business as such. That's remarkable. Not everybody really thinks that way. Uh, also now uh, you have a vision uh, to convert buildings, public buildings with, with green architecture. So if you could tell us about that and how practical it is and um, you know, uh, how, how can one do this? That's an interesting question because so far we've had green buildings, uh, certified green buildings which use less uh, water, less energy and less waste. But what we find is that the buildings in the world use about 40% of the world's energy. And with the increasing population, by 2030, our energy consumption will increase by another 50%. Hmm. And what has been done is the Greenhouse uh, Global Report of the UN has found that in 2017, the CO2 levels in the air were 405.5. 5 ppm. In 2017, there were 403.3. And in, fourth, in 2015, there were 401.1. So in other words, in two years, the CO2 levels have gone up by 4 ppm. And that is significant. And Al Gore has clearly established the link between the CO2 levels and the increase in temperature. So today, we need to find every way where we need to take steps 
to reduce global warming. And buildings are one which can help do that. In our own experiment in Paharpur Business Center where I'm located, uh, we have 7,000 indoor plants. So we grow our own fresh air. And because of growing the fresh air, our emissions from the building in terms of air are at 600 ppm versus what is permitted by USGBC lead platinum buildings as 700 over the CO2 ambient levels. And in fact, in India and in, in Delhi and many of our cities are increasing uh, air conditioners. That's going to be another reason. And we're seeing more and more people acquiring air conditioners. So you can, you're saying we can offset that by having uh, more green plants in our buildings. Well, absolutely right. The idea is to be able to reduce the CO2 emissions from human beings. Human beings emit about 3, million, 3 billion tons of CO2 per year or 2.2 kg per day. And hence, it is important that we can grow plants indoors to reduce the CO2 levels. And also, very interestingly, we found that our energy consumption, because of this, has gone down to 17 watt hours per square meter per hour, which is extremely low. So in other words, we are using less fossil fuel energy uh, to also and growing your air, own condition, clean air. air condition, uh, uh, keep the air clean of pollution, and also the CO2 levels in the building.